please welcome to the stage DJ Demers. <laughs> You good? You good? Sounded good. Sounded really good. Good to be here. I'm very happy to be here. I'll let you guys know right off the top, I wear hearing aids. I'm sure some of you know that, but I just like to get it out of the way so nobody's distracted, you know what I mean? I don't want to be telling a joke about my crotch or something, and people are still kind of looking at my hearing aid, and I got to be like, guys, come on, my crotch is down here, okay? <laughs> Show a little respect. This pandemic's been rough. If you wear a hearing aids, if you can't hear, oh my God, everybody's got a mask on. I can't lip read anymore. People used to always ask me, like, how much can you actually hear and how much are you lip reading? And I was never able to do the math, you know? But, uh, <laughs> now that everybody's been covering their mouth, I was finally able to uh, run the numbers. And uh, it turns out I'm lip reading 100% of the time. So, yeah. I thought I was hard of hearing. Turns out I'm full on deaf, just uh, wearing these decorative earpieces for no reason at all. <laughs> terrible, man. When they got the mask on and the plexiglass, you walk in somewhere, they got the mask and the glass. I walk in, I'm at the bank, they're standing behind the glass. I'm just looking at them for like 10 seconds before finally I'm just like, H have you started talking yet? <laughs> I legitimately have no idea. I'm like, if this is really important, could you just write it on a piece of paper and put it up against the glass like a, like a reverse robbery situation? <laughs> Bank teller's trying to help me out, like, put your card in the machine, type in your pin, motherfucker. I'm like, oh. <laughs> a bit hostile, I appreciate the accessibility though, thank you. Crazy, man, I can't hear anything. I'm just going through my day-to-day -day life, just butchering every conversation. Last time I was at the grocery store, I recorded it on my voice memo on my phone so I could play it for my wife when I got home. I was like, can you let me know just how badly I'm messing up this conversation? And I played it for her when I got home and she was like, oh yeah, it's bad. <laughs> It's really bad. Cause I walked up to this cashier, right, with my groceries and I should let you know, like now when I can't hear, I just say, yeah. Like I used to have a bunch of words I said, now I've just narrowed it down to one word. I, I can't hear you. I go, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or I do a little laugh. I go, <laughs> I like to keep it positive while I slowly disengage from society, you know? So I walk up to this cashier and my wife's telling me what happened the whole time. I didn't know what happened this whole conversation. I was faking the whole time and I played it for my wife when I got home and she told me this is what, what happened. I walked up to the cashier with my groceries and I put my groceries on the little conveyor belt thing and the cashier said, hey, how you doing today? And I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, okay, uh, you need any plastic bags for your groceries? And I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so he gave me some bags, and I was like, oh, no thanks, I brought my own. And he was like, what the You just said, okay, all right. He took the bags back, and then I packed my groceries, and I walked out, and he was like, hey, hey, you have to pay for those. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. Just left. My wife was like, you didn't hear him say you had to pay for those? I was like, no, but I was wondering why he tackled me in the parking lot. I thought, I thought he was just a playful guy. I'm joking about it, but it's pretty serious, man. I learned recently that hearing loss is actually the number one cause of dementia. Hearing loss, number one cause of dementia. I learned that from the little wizard I talked to in the park. And, uh, he's a good guy. He knows a lot. I should be an anti-masker with how much these masks are messing up my life, but I don't know, man, I wear them. COVID ain't no joke, you know, I, I wear the mask. But uh, I felt the power of being an anti-masker last summer. Like, I understood what it means to be an anti-masker. I went to the airport last August. I had a gig out of town, so I went to LAX. And we didn't have to wear a mask in LA for like a week. It looked like things were getting better. You remember that little, it was right between the 17th and 18th wave. And... Uh, <laughs> 
times. You know, better times. So I go to the airport. I didn't bring my mask. Early flight. So I'm at the airport at like 5.30 in the morning. And I go into the airport, no mask on. And then I'm printing my ticket out at the little kiosk thing. And then as I'm printing it out, I look around. Everybody's got a mask on. And I'm like, oh, shit. You know, I realized I didn't have one on. And that panic came over me. You know that panic you feel when you realize you're different from everybody else in a public place? I was like, oh, shit, shit. But then that panic turned into the opposite feeling you feel when you realize you're different from everybody else, you know? That power that comes over you. I felt it. I looked at everybody in their mask and I just wanted to yell out like, wake up, you sheeple. I felt it. But I didn't yell that because I'm a huge pussy. But uh, I am, I can admit that. I'm not like the world's biggest pussy, but I'm on the spectrum, you know? I got some pussy tendencies for sure. So I just stood there and waited for somebody to come yell at me and a security guard walked up to me and he just walked right at me. He's like, hey, you got to put a mask on. I think that's what he said. He had a mask on, so I didn't hear him. But... <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he gave me a mask. He pulled one out of his back pocket. He gave it to me, but it wasn't in a wrapper or anything. It was just like a white, like kind of an off-white mask and he pulled it out. Yeah, and he rubbed it way too hard on his ass when he pulled it out, too. He gave it to me, and I put it on. I was like, okay, this seems more like a punishment than a solution, but... All okay. right. I put it on, and I wore that diaper-ass mask all the way to my gig. It smelled a little funky, but you can get used to anything, man. COVID's... COVID's not fun, man. You know, a buddy of mine got it and uh, lost his sense of smell came back after three months. Sense of smell came back after three months. I was hanging out with him. I went out for lunch with him like a week after his sense of smell came back. He was overjoyed. His sense of smell came back. I've never seen him that happy. He said to me, he was like, dude, don't ever take your senses for granted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, man, I'll try to internalize that one. Thanks. Yeah. Don't take your senses for granted. Okay, got it. Yeah, man, he went through it. I asked him, I said, what smell did you miss the most? Because he couldn't smell for three months. I said, what smell did you miss the most? He's got a, a beautiful wife, a newborn kid. And he said, honestly, I missed the smell of my wife's hair, missed the smell of my kid, you know, my, my baby's skin. But more than anything, I missed the smell of my own farts. <laughs> he was dead serious. I started laughing. He was like, I'm not joking, dude. He was like, people try to, you know, he was like, it doesn't make sense. Everyone says, oh, your body's a temple, but we're not allowed to appreciate our chimney. You know what I mean? <laughs> His word, that's my friend, man. He went to the dark side, he came back and he had a message for me. He said, don't take your farts for granted. He said, sometimes he would be sitting on the couch and he would just let one rip and he would forget he couldn't smell and he would go to take a whiff and he'd be like, fuck, you know? <laughs> Shit. I know what I ate, I know how that felt. That was a good one, you know? Sad. But it came back, man. We were sitting at lunch. He let one rip while I was sitting with him. He didn't mean, he thought it was going to be a silent one, but it like squeaked out on him. You know what I mean? You know, those ones that kind of sound like a question mark when they come out. Like, you know? And he was like, so sorry, man. Sorry. And I was like, don't ever apologize for that. Welcome back, brother. That's what I said. Welcome back. And then I leaned over the table and I took it into it. That's disgusting. I can't believe you were missing out on that. That's what friends do. <laughs> Pandemic ruined my favorite move I used to do, man, when I knew I was in a, like if I was in a public place and I knew I had to fart, but I didn't have time to like get out of the room, I would cough at the same time as the fart. You guys know the cough and fart? I didn't invent it, but I damn near perfected it, man. I love the cough and fart. You time it, right? You feel the fart coming? <laughs> right? People often know what you're up to, but they respect the effort, you know what I mean? It's a courtesy thing, more than anything. Not easy to do the coffin fart. I don't want to give you that impression. You can easily mistime a coffin fart. That really, nothing confuses people more than a mistimed coffin fart. When you're just like, <clears throat> Dude, did you just announce your fart? What the hell is that? It also only works for an odorless fart. That's a key point. You can't be trying to do the coffin fart with a stinky fart. That really confuses people. When you're like, <clears throat> everyone's like, 
why does your cough stink like shit? What the hell's going on? You might want to get that looked at. Anyway, none of this matters now. You can't even do the cough and fart anymore. The cough is worse than the fart now in this new world we're living in. Nothing worse than a cough. We've all been in a public place when somebody starts coughing violently. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Dude, you got three seconds to tell me something just went down the wrong tube. Somebody sneezes right after a cough. It's like, we got to kill this guy. This guy. Even the guy who sneezes is like, I understand. I'm a liability. Please take me out. <laughs> now nah, the coughing fart's dead now, man. Now it's the opposite. If I'm in a public place and I feel a cough coming on, I just pray that I, that I got a fart coming soon. You know what I mean? <laughs> now I got to cover up the cough with the fart in this weird new world we live in. <laughs> COVID's scary, but I gotta admit the lockdown when it first hit, that first one, when it was scary for a few weeks, a few months, however long it's been scary, I don't know, lost track of time, but after a while, I kind of settled into a groove with that lockdown. You know what I mean? Like after a few weeks, I was just hanging out with my wife, just making delicious meals, playing video games, playing board games, making love, collecting money from the government. I was like, I, was like, I think I'm retired now. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is it. I think I just hang out forever now. This is pretty sweet. Just hanging out with my wife. Me and my wife. All day. Every day. Yeah, when the pandemic started, we were married for two years, and now we've been married for 29 years. So, yeah. 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 We squeezed a lot of time in there. That was good. No, I'm happy I had her. Have her, not had her. I think we've all seen enough true crime documentaries to know <laughs> how much of a red flag it is once a husband starts speaking in the past tense. You know? yeah. like, I don't think she's missing, dude. I think you killed her. I gotta be honest. Have. I'm lucky I have her. I would have gotten weird if that lockdown hit and I was single. Not just single, but like lonely. If I would have been lonely and I wasn't allowed to like go meet anybody, had to just stay inside, I would have gotten weird. It would have gotten dark in a hurry. I know myself. Within a week, I would have been making sourdough bread. I know that. I know that. Within two weeks, I would have been making love to that sourdough bread. For sure. That bread was getting fucked. No. My wife and I just, we played a lot of Scrabble. Not a big fan of Scrabble. But it's a good way to kill eight or nine hours, you know? <laughs> Kicks my ass. So one day we were playing, she laid down the word, she put her tie up down, sodomy was the word she laid down. That'll snap you awake real quick, you know? <laughs> when your wife lays down the word sodomy, you're like, okay, all right. She was just playing the letters she had, it's a good word, you know, it's a good play, but I was distracted the rest of the game, I couldn't even, because the whole time we were playing, the rest of the time I was like, what does sodomy mean, you know? <laughs> I know it's like a sexual word, but I was like, what actually is sodomy? So we finished the game and I looked it up and I learned a lot. And uh, I think you guys will too. Uh, sodomy, this is a real definition of sodomy. Sodomy is any sexual act that involves either anal sex, oral sex, or bestiality. Anal, oral, or sex with animals. I just want to say, I think that's a bit too large of an umbrella. You know? <laughs> I feel like we need to tighten that definition up a little bit, you know what I mean? One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> Anal, oral, or sex with animals? Why, why you gotta lump me in with these freaks over here, you know? I thought I had a pretty normal sex life. You're gonna lump me in with these anal-loving freaks over here? <laughs> No, but for real, sex with animals. When I learned that definition, that made me realize, like, I wouldn't even be, if I was, like, walking through a field somewhere and saw, you know, I caught some dude, like, making love to a goat. Based on this definition, I wouldn't even be able to say anything to this guy. I'd be a hypocrite. Yeah. Walking through, he's like, Aah. I'm like, dude, come on, man, what are you doing? That's weird. He'd just be like, come on, bro, I know you love blowjobs, huh? <laughs> Both fans are sodomy, am I right? Come on. 
I'm doing them anal too, double sodomy, you'll love this. Get around the front, bro. Let's complete the trifecta. Come on. Ah. Somebody please change this definition. I know that seemed like a really dirty joke, but uh, you got to keep in mind that was a Scrabble joke. So. I was on my phone too much the last couple years. I mean, I've been addicted to my phone for like 10 years, but the last... Last two years, it's gotten crazy. My phone will tell me how long I've been on. It'll be like, yesterday, you were on your phone. Last week, you were on your phone for an average of eight hours. But it doesn't give you any solutions. It's just like, yeah, just letting you know. <laughs> letting you know I got you, bitch, you know? <laughs> you're mine. You know you're on your phone too much when you're in the middle of looking at your phone? You're like, man. Been looking at the screen too long. I need a break. And you put it down and you turn on the TV. Uh, the real world. I joined TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'm 36 years old. I shouldn't be on TikTok. That algorithm's crazy, though. It'll just show you, like, a crazy car crash, an amazing dunk in a basketball game, some hot chick dancing in a bikini, just one after another. I'm like, I love all of these things. You know? Back to back to back. 36 years old, though, I'm on it. I just feel like the biggest creep. I remember when Facebook got ruined when I was young and old people ruined Facebook for me. I remember when I was, like, 20 and it was just me and my buddies putting pictures up from a drunken night the night before, and then... All of a sudden, the old people joined and it was over. I remember that first day I logged into Facebook and there was a friend request from my Aunt Debbie. <laughs> Party's over, everyone. <laughs> Aunt Debbie's here, let's pack it up. <laughs> now I'm Aunt Debbie on TikTok. <laughs> Feel like the creepy dude just hanging out at the bar with all the young kids wearing a sweater from the local college even though I never went there. Ah. <laughs> Trying to relate to all them, huh? So you guys were all born in the 2000s, huh? 86. <laughs> Is that sus? I don't know. I don't know what that word means. shouldn't even let me download TikTok. If you're old, it should just not let you. When you try to download it, it should just do like a facial scan to determine if you're allowed to have TikTok. It should just scan like, scanning face, gray hair detected, wrinkles detected, youthful innocence not detected. Download canceled, redirecting to LinkedIn. Yeah, man. That seems fair. I'm an Instagram guy. I'm bored with it, but it's what I am, man. I, that's, I don't like it, but I'll just be on Instagram forever. You ever, I unfollowed a few people during the pandemic. You ever like scroll through your Instagram and you just see somebody's face and you're like, we're done here. No more, no more. I unfollowed this one dude on Instagram. I met him like 10 years ago. We both followed each other. I've never seen him again in real life. Ten years ago, we followed each other. Now he just, and he posts every day. I've been seeing this guy for the last ten years, but never in real life. I don't even know if he's a real person anymore. He could just, could just be AI. I don't know. But every day I see this guy, and he's had two kids since I started following him. I've watched his kids grow up. Like, watch them grow up. Like, I remember their first communion, their first day of school. I got four nieces and a nephew. I have no idea what the hell they're up to. I know this guy's kids better than my own nieces. And he's kind of weirdly negative. Like, I'm just not a fan of this guy. I'm not trying to be rude, but I just was like, this guy's taking up too much real estate in my brain. I unfollowed him, and uh, I thought that would be the end of it. But then I checked my Facebook like an hour later, and there was a message from him on my Facebook Messenger. I forgot we were connected on Facebook, too. I didn't realize how deep these tentacles went. And, and the Facebook, the subject line just said, dude, what the fuck? That's all it said. Oh my God, my pussy ass heart started beating a mile a minute. I was like, oh man, he knows. He knows. I open the message. There's a screenshot from some app that he has that shows you who unfollowed you. I didn't know this app existed. It just said, DJ unfollowed you. And I was like, oh my God. First of all, I didn't even know this app existed. And I'm not here to judge anybody, but like what personality type has this app? Like who wants to know who's abandoning them on a daily basis? Right? That can't be good for your mental health. 
And second of all, even if I did unfollow you, dude, like, just let it go. Be an adult. Don't call me out on that shit. That, this is the kind of behavior that made me unfollow you in the first place, you know what I mean? Anyway, I didn't say any of this to him, but... Uh, what I did say to him was, hey, man, this must have been a glitch with Instagram. Because I would... Because I would never unfollow you, bro. That's what I said. I said, we're buddies, man. Come on. Then I wouldn't get to see Zach and Vanessa grow up. They're getting so big. I said, we should hang out sometime. It's been too long, brother. That's what I said. Then I followed him back on Instagram again. And now I just have to follow him for the rest of my life. He won. I can't even mute him. I don't know how powerful this app is that he has. What I need is an app that shows me who has that app. That's what I need. You wanna get petty? We can get petty. Our neighborhood got sketchier during the pandemic. Usually you take a drink on big laughter. I prefer to do it on silence. <laughs> Yeah, our neighborhood guy, we live in East Hollywood and, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, I'm just, like I said, I'm a bit of a pussy and I got a little sketchy. And I'm the kind of pussy where we'll, like, hear screaming from the street, because people are just screaming out there and my wife will be like, oh, should we, like, go check on that? And I'm like, no, no, I think it's good screaming. <laughs> sounds like they're celebrating something, yeah, I think, sounds like they're yelling, yelp, yelp, I think they must be reviewing something. Close the window, let's go to sleep. I get nervous when I'm walking around. That's when I do my best thinking. I get home from shows, I walk around at night. But man, I hate that feeling when you're walking and you feel some dude walking behind you and you feel like he's got bad intentions. I, get, oh, I just feel it, I'm walking, you gotta do the look back to see how much of a threat they posed. But you can't like turn and look right at them because then they know, they're like, oh, this guy's a pussy, I got him. So you gotta do the like, Casual look back, the peripheral, or I love it when there's like glass on the other side of the street so I can catch a reflection, right? But if I look and I see they're catching up to me, I run. <laughs> I'm not kidding, I don't give a shit. It's my life we're talking about, okay? This isn't a game to me. Might be a pussy move, but this pussy's alive, baby. I don't care, okay? I, have, I don't run all the time. I've run twice in the last two years, but one of those two times, the dude chased after me, man. I'm not paranoid. I'm batting 500 on this shit, okay? <laughs> yeah, I got away. I wanted to live more than he wanted to hurt me, you know? <laughs> I'm not just gonna casually stroll while you stab a screwdriver into my kidney, okay? You want this? Come and get it. I'm gone, okay? <laughs> I got running shoes on. You see people walking around at night wearing flip-flops? You're gonna gamble with your life like that? No way. I got running shoes on at all times. I'm ready to rock. Nobody cares how tough you are when you're dead. You never hear on the news, oh, a man was brutally beaten to death on the street last night. Witnesses say he sounded really tough while he died. No, nobody cares. You're dead, dude. Pussies live. Pussies live. Put that on a t-shirt. I hate when I'm walking behind a girl, a lady, and I can tell she's worried about me. She thinks I'm one of the bad guys. Nothing you can do to put her mind at ease, you know? You can't say anything. That's not the move. I tried that before. That did not help. I was walking behind this girl one time, and I, we were walking the same direction for way too long. Like, for like 500 yards, and I was just walking, like, slightly faster than her, so I was, like, slowly catching up, right? That's not how I was walking, by the way. <laughs> Why is she so nervous? Yeah. I know, I was walking behind her for a while and she kept doing the nervous look back. So finally, like, I was catching up, I was catching up, and then when I was like 20 feet behind her, I started to do one more look back, and I was like, I'm gonna say something. And I was like 20 feet behind, she did a look back, and I called ahead, I said, you're okay. Why wouldn't I be? Why'd you say that? <laughs> That's not the move. Now if I'm walking behind a girl and I can tell she's getting nervous, what I do is I break into a full sprint. I run right by her. She's scared for a second, but then I'm gone. Short-term pain, long-term gain. 
And then when I'm like 100 feet in front of her, I look back at her and I go, I'm scared of you now. <laughs> if you really want to let her know you don't pose a threat, you start speed walking. That's what you do. Nobody's scared of a speed walker out in the streets. No, oh, he's training. I know I've said pussy a lot, by the way. It's a pretty aggressive word, I understand that. A lot of, I, I try to think of other words I could say so I didn't use pussy so much. I know I'm describing myself, but it's still a pretty like aggressive word. And I definitely don't want women to think I'm talking about the vagina at all. Like I'm not even thinking about that. I don't equate the two. I got nothing but love and respect for the vagina. It's been very good to me from day one. Uh, well, not really day one. I was born cesarean, but. Uh, <laughs> That wasn't the vagina's fault, that was me. I was all confused, I was upside down. I'd never done it before. I think that's why to this day I'm still not, I'm still scared to like dive head first into water. I, I feel like if you took a poll of everybody who is not able to dive into water, 100% of them were born with a C-section, I think. There's gotta be some hard science backing that up. Anyway, I was trying to think of a word to say instead of pussy, to not be so aggressive. And I was like, maybe I'll call myself a coward. Maybe that's the word. But I was like, I thought of it, I'm like, I'm not a coward. Push comes to shove, I'll stand up for my wife, my friends, my family. But I'm a pussy, because I really don't want to have to do that. You know? <laughs> I'm really hoping I can coast through the rest of my life with no confrontation, you know what I mean? That would be sweet. So then I thought, okay, not coward. Maybe I'll call myself a sissy boy. Maybe that's a move. Sissy boy. I tried it a couple times. I gotta be honest, sissy boy hurt my feelings a lot more than pussy. <laughs> sissy boy is a hurtful word. I might be a pussy, but I ain't no fucking sissy boy, okay? <laughs> Don't get a pussy. But then this problem was solved. It was so beautiful. A woman came up to me after a show a few months ago. A really smart looking lady, gray hair, pulled back into a bun, those circle glasses. She told me she was a retired school teacher. And she said, you don't need to feel bad about using the word pussy. It has nothing to do with female genitals, nothing like that. It comes from an old English word, an adjective that means cowardly or yellow belly. Pusillanimous is the word. That's where it comes from, pusillanimous. She said, so that's where pussy comes from. You don't need to feel bad about using that word. Use it all you want, you fucking sissy boy. <laughs> 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 Took a turn at the end there, but. I appreciate your honesty. I do appreciate honesty. I wish we could all be more honest, just, not we, me. I wish I could be more honest. In society, just like in day-to-day -day life, I don't tell people how I feel at all. My dispensary I go to for weed is still, they're dishonest. Weed's completely legal for recreational reason. They're still asking me medicinal questions when I go in there. I'm like, let's cut the shit. I go in, my guy, the dispensary guy, he's like, so what kind of a strain are you looking for? Are you looking for something that helps with anxiety or you having muscle pain? I'm like, I'm really happy you asked because I've really been dealing with this ailment lately where uh, I'm not as high as I'd like to be. <laughs> uh, 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 it's pretty serious, it's pretty serious. If you got anything for that. These dispensaries, too easy to get weed now. You know, I love weed. You gotta put some obstacles in front of me. You go in, these, these dispensaries, they all look like Apple stores when you go in now. The employees are all wearing matching uniforms and shit. Matching uniforms, at least let me feel a little cool while I buy my drugs. I miss the days when I used to be scared when I bought my weed. I used to get high on the fear before the weed. You know? Like when I was in high school, me and my buddies, especially when we were between dealers, you'd have to ask around to get your weed. And me and my buddies on like a Friday night, we'd be like, are we gonna get some weed tonight? And then you'd have to ask around. You know, your buddy would ask his brother, he would ask his guidance counselor. And you, <laughs> you had to work for it. And then a plan would come together and it was always a scary plan for me. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, he said he knows a guy. He said, just meet us at, he'll meet us in the Chevron parking lot at midnight. Just get into his car. Oh, okay. Did he say what car he'll be in? He's like, well, he didn't mention make or model, but he said you'll know it's him because he'll be in the scariest, darkest corner of the parking lot. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All of a sudden, it's midnight on a Friday. I'm just knocking on the window of some random 97 Pontiac Sunfire. 
Hey, man, you the weed guy? Or the murder guy. I'm hoping the weed guy. And I'm sitting in the car. I know there's a 50-50 chance this dude is going to sell me oregano. I know there's a 100% chance I'm going to smoke that oregano. I'm not going to say shit. I'm going to get high off that oregano. Mind over matter. Even when dispensaries first came around, they were more fun. When they weren't like mainstream, when they were kind of underground, they all smelled like incense. You'd walk in, the employees were all high. The employees aren't high anymore, too corporate. I want my dispensary employees to be stoned off their rocker. That's, you go in, they'd just be doing a huge bong hit. You just coughing up a storm. You walk in, like, hey man, what can I get you? You're like, I don't know, I'll have whatever you were just having, man. That seems, <laughs> seems like it will do the trick. Even trying to buy the weed was a whole ordeal because it was two stoners trying to conduct business. <laughs> I'd buy $50 worth of weed. I would give the guy $320. He'd be like, all right. He would, he would give me a 20 back. I'm like, no, nah, dude, you gave me too much. You gave me too much. And then I would give him two 20s back for some reason. and then I would just walk out without my weed. Those were the good old days. Yeah, I, I wish we could just be honest. Even like when I'm driving on the highway, bothers me that we're not honest just as a society. Like when you're driving on the highway and then there's a cop driving on the highway too, and everybody slows down and starts going 65 when the cops are around. Oh yeah, we love going this speed. <laughs> bullshit, man. I wish I had the ball to just be honest, you know? Even if there was a cop on the highway, I'd just keep going 80. Cop pulls me over, he's like, you know why I pulled you over? I'd be like, officer, I'm gonna stop you right there. I just wanna let you know, when you're not around, we're all going this speed, okay? <laughs> Don't punish me, I'm the only friend you got out here, okay? <laughs> he's like, that may be so, but didn't you see the sign with the speed limit? I'm like, I'm gonna be honest once again. I've been looking at my phone for the last five minutes, so. <laughs> No, I didn't see the signs. Are they new? <laughs> I hate when the cops already got somebody pulled over and everybody slows down. Cops already got somebody on the side of the road. Everyone's like, oh, they slowed down. <laughs> He's already got the guy. This is the perfect time to speed. Unless you're like hanging out your window waving a bag of cocaine or something. <laughs> you're fine. You're good. Keep going. Cops never gonna have somebody pulled over. Like, you know why I pulled you over? You were going 10 over there. <laughs> that guy was going 12 over. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Those are the only two jokes I have about the police. They're, they're pretty tame. With the conversation we've been having about the police in this country in the last couple years, I was like, maybe I'll write some hard hitting, substantial jokes about the police. And then I thought about it and I'm like, I'm a pussy ass. <laughs> suburban, middle-class white dude, you know? That was my upbringing. The police were always very kind to me. That's just my reality. I can't, it's not my place to speak. Like, I would run away from them when they broke up parties in high school and stuff, but it was more like a game than anything, you know? <laughs> Ooh, the police are here. <laughs> I wasn't worried. In fact, my first reaction when the cops broke up a party in high school, my first reaction was usually, it's probably good that they're here. It was getting a little out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my truth. That's my truth. I went to a couple of the Black Lives Matter protests a couple years ago in the summer because I wanted to be on the right side of history. I believe in it. Equal rights, equal justice for everybody. I believe in it strongly, but you can't change the pussy ass, middle class, <laughs> white heart you got beaten in your chest. You know what I mean? Because I was there and I felt it. I was like, things need to change. But while we were marching by the police, I was still looking at them like, but if anything bad happened, you're still going to help, right? <laughs> Believe in honesty. I got uh, pretty deep into UFC during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've always liked UFC, but they were the first sport to come back in the pandemic. They came back within like a month. They were like, no, nah, the world needs us now more than ever. <laughs> world needs to see people beating the shit out of each other to know it's all gonna be okay. When they took all the sports away at the same time, 
You remember that? Like, all of a sudden, because I'm an idiot, right? When they first announced, like, COVID, when I first started hearing about it in the news and everything, I was one of those morons. I was like, guys, this will be over in three, four days, tops. We'll be back. And then they took all the sports away. I was like, it's pretty serious, guys. <laughs> they, they took all the sports away. We should probably start washing our hands, you know? <laughs> They took them all away, and I love sport, but I didn't know I needed sport until they took them all away. All of a sudden, hours of my day, I didn't know how to fill. I started watching like weird ass random sport just to fill that void in my heart. Like the stuff you see on ESPN at like two in the morning. Started watching like those world's strongest man competitions. You ever see those? It's all those like 380 pound dudes. They're all from Sweden for some reason. They're all named Magnus Magnuson. <laughs> doing the most random shit you've ever seen, just like pulling a transport truck with their dick for some reason. Just... <laughs> How did you even learn you were good at that? <laughs> Lumberjack competitions, I started watching those. That's an easy one to hate on when you're first flipping through the channels. Just see some dude chopping at a block of wood with an ax. Like, what the hell is this? That's not a sport. And 15 seconds later, he's halfway through the wood. You're like, this son of a bitch is actually gonna do it. <laughs> 30 seconds, he goes through the whole log. You're like, that would've taken me weeks, man. <laughs> weeks. When they climb the tree with those rope things. Yeah. 100 feet in like 10 seconds, and then they gotta come back down. <laughs> My God, what a sport. <laughs> cornhole, I got deep into cornhole. Yeah. That sounded more sexual than I intended, but I stand by it. Cornhole's the best. You guys know cornhole? Oh, yeah, okay. Cornhole enthusiast. If you don't know cornhole, it's the one where you throw a bag into a hole, and uh, that's it. That's the full explanation. What a sport. It's on ESPN. Not underground. It's mainstream. Here to stay. Two commentators and a sideline reporter work in these cornhole matches. Sideline reporter interviews are the best athlete interviews you'll ever see in your life. They're just standing like five feet away from the cornholers. And every once in a while they just walk up to him and they're like, hey, uh, looks like you're on a bit of a run here. What's going on? Guy's like, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to get it in the hole and it's going in and that feels pretty good. <laughs> Back to you guys. They're like, yeah, you can stop pressing your ear like that. We're standing right beside you. It's Pretty low budget. You know what I think the next big sport's gonna be? Speed walking. I know I made fun of it earlier, but that was just to throw you off. I love speed walking. Speed walking, man, what a sport. It's easy to hate on speed walking, but once you get over your prejudice, undeniably the sexiest sport on the goddamn planet. Like, what other sport is literally all in the hips? And it's no joke, they go for 33 miles. 50 kilometers. That's how long a speed walking event is. 33 miles. Could you imagine doing this? 33 miles? No fucking way. I would need a double hip transplant halfway through the race. 30. You know what I love about speed walking? It's the only sport with like a limit. Built in limit. Every other sport, they're like, give it 110%. Speed walking's the only sport where they're like, better cap it at 98. If we're not careful, this could turn into a jog. Because that is the rule with speed walking. When you're running or jogging, both of your feet will come up. You'll be completely off the ground. Speed walking, the rule is you always have to have one foot on the ground. That's what makes the speed walking. One foot on the ground at all times. And they're serious about it. No joke, they got judges at every turn. They're watching, making sure. If they see both feet come in the air, oh my God, they're like, both feet, they come up. They drag them off the course. never see him again. <laughs> Serious business out there. I love speed walking too because it's like the only sport where there's no evolutionary reason for it to exist. Like running makes sense. We had to run from our predators. We had to run after prey. You know, swimming. We came from the water. That makes sense. Skiing. We wanted to get down mountains quicker. We slapped some skis on. Everything makes sense. Speed walking. No reason. Speed walking for sure. Absolutely. Was just invented by some dude who sucked at running. He was losing every race. All his friends were making fun of him. He was getting tired of it. One day after losing another race, his buddies were like, man, Jason, you really suck at running. 
He just snapped. He was like, well, that might be so, but I, I bet you I'm the fastest walker here. <laughs> okay, Jay, we'll let you have that one, buddy. He was like, yeah, you'll see. They'll all see. Then he was just gone. <laughs> Nobody ever saw him again. I have a dream of waiting at the finish line of a speed walking event. I just want to wait, like, behind some bushes or something. Because they go for 33 miles, like I said. But that's just a race. That doesn't take into account the mental prep, the years of training. All they know is speed walking. It's in their bone. It's in their blood. So I want to wait at the finish line, hiding. And then the second they cross the finish line, I want to pop out from behind these bushes with a knife. Right? And I want to just charge at them. Ah! I want to scare them. Because I want to know in that moment of panic, dude's coming at them with a knife. They just finished a 33-mile speed walking event. Guy coming at them with a knife. Would they run away? <laughs> or speed walk away. I feel like they'd want to run, but I don't think their body would allow it. I think they'd be like, oh! <laughs> Locked in a prison of their own creation. And then I'd stab them, I guess. I mean, I think I'd have to at that point. They took speed walking out of the Olympics. This year is the last year, it's gone. Bad move, bad move. What we have is a marketing issue with speed walking. I want them to put me in charge of it. I could bring it, I could make it the biggest sport on the planet, I'm not even kidding. What I would do, I would license it out to all the other sports. Think of your favorite sport, put the word speed walking in front of it. Whole new incredible sport. It works for every sport. Speed walking baseball, imagine it. You're telling me you wouldn't watch speed walking baseball? Yeah. I would watch the shit out of speed walk and baseball. Just imagine a dude up the bat, you hit the ball to the left field gap, he's just going to first. <laughs> Outfielder trying to track it down. <laughs> Outfielder misses it, guy tried to stretch it into a double. Right? Watching somebody try to slide into second base with that little momentum. Just... <laughs> second baseman gets it, tags him, the ump's like, ow! Oh! Coach is on the bench in the dugout. He can't believe it. He's like, you just call him out? Are you fucking kidding me, Umpy? You gotta be kidding me. Barge is onto the field. Come on. Get your eyes checked. Speed walking football? Come on. Come on, we'll cut down on the concussions. That's for sure. Can you imagine getting a concussion playing speed walking football? It's humiliating. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be like real sports, it could just be like random events, like, you know, the running with the bulls they do every year in Spain. <laughs> Big deal, anybody can run with the bulls. <laughs> right. Let's see what you're really made out of. Speed walking with the bulls, that's what I'm talking about. Thousands of people die every year, what a sport. Real violence. I love violent sports. I love them, man. The more violent, the better. It is hard for me to watch violent sports sometimes because I played a lot of hockey growing up. I got a lot of concussions. I feel like they might have scrambled my brain a little bit, but I just love violent sports. It is a little hard for me to watch violent sports sometimes because I played a lot of hockey growing up, and I got a lot of concussions. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I feel like they might have scrambled my brain a little bit, but... That was a joke, but if I do it again, call an ambulance, please. <laughs> I love... I love violent sports. I love football. Super Bowl tomorrow, that's where we're in LA here, yeah. It's gonna be good, man. It's hard for me to watch football. I mean, I love it, but these guys, they're so, they're all too big and strong and fast now. They're all like 6'5", 250. They run like a 4'3", 40, and they hit each other. Just, you see them hit each other on the field, and you, you can just see the years leaving their body. You <laughs> can always tell how bad of an injury it is by how long of a commercial break they have to cut to. <laughs> They cut away for like two commercials. You're like, oh, it must have been a sprained ankle or something. No big deal. Seven commercials, eight commercials. You're like, yeah, that guy's dead for sure. <laughs> I just witnessed a murder. 
but I'm such a like Neanderthal. It doesn't take much for me to feel okay about continuing to watch. Like they come back, guys being carted off on a stretcher. All I need to see is him put one thumb in the air. That's all I need to see. I see that thumb go up. I'm like, okay, he's fine. Get him the hell out of here. The next day you read on the internet, they're like, oh, he actually broke his pelvis in eight different places. You're like, well, doesn't make any sense. I mean, his thumb was working great. I... Very misleading. I love the UFC too, like I said. Man, UFC. Love watching dudes beat the shit out of each other. I watch the women too, I'm progressive. <laughs> Whoever wants to beat the shit out of each other, I will watch it. I wish I didn't love it so much. I wish I was like, oh, that's too barbaric for me, but you know, I just love it. These guys are just, and gals, they're just crazy. You know what I mean? Like they, the way they fight, it's just, Insane, and the, it's so exciting to watch. The commentators yell so loud. My wife hates it when I watch it, because we just live in an apartment. When I'm watching UFC on the TV, like that sound is filling the whole apartment. And the commentators are yelling, because they're excited. And my wife was like, do they have to yell so loud, the commentators? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. 100%. You know how creepy this sport would be if they were whispering like golf commentators? It would be the creepiest sport on the planet. Oh yes, he's kicked him in the face, and oh yes, the blood is pouring down his face now. <laughs> he's wrapped him up in a rear naked choke, and yes, he's sliding into unconsciousness. <laughs> Did I just watch a snuff film? What the hell was that? <laughs> no, they have to be yelling. That's what makes it okay. Although I would love to see the opposite. I would love to see golf commentators bringing some of that UFC enthusiasm to their commentating. He's like, you see how hard he fucking drove that ball? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Man, he missed that putt by two inches. He must be fucking pissed right now. <laughs> I would watch that. Tried to get my buddy into the UFC. He's a big sports fan, but he doesn't watch UFC at all. Didn't think it was like a real sport. I tried to tell him, like, I was like, it's a real, like, tactical, strategical, it's a sport. I tried to get him into it. He watched a couple fights with me. Then he had an observation. He wasn't trying to be, like, hateful or anything. He just noticed. He was like, you gotta admit, like, when the guys are fighting, it kind of looks like they're having gay sex. <laughs> and I was like, gay sex? Buddy, I don't know what kind of gay sex you've been watching, but you need to report that to the authorities immediately. <laughs> that is not what it's supposed to look like. I'm no expert, but I don't think gay sex should end with a spinning roundhouse kick to the temple, you know? <laughs> Just my opinion. There might be gay people in the UFC, of course there are, but the actual fighting is not gay. There's no room for arousal in the octagon, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta have your wits about you at all times. If you got a boner in the middle of a fight? Just hanging out there all willy-nilly? No way, very susceptible to a submission attempt. <laughs> Your opponent would have you in a penis bar in no time. You're done. <laughs> the dreaded penis bar. Nothing you can do. Just gotta hope you go limp before he breaks it. That's the only way out. <laughs> you start thinking about your grandma and shit. <laughs> oh my God, I got harder. I'm concussed. I'm confused. <laughs> I love when a fighter doesn't speak English when they need an interpreter, a translator. Those translators got a lot of power. I've seen them go rogue before. <laughs> Where you're like, that's not what that guy just said. I saw this dude, he, this guy was clearly already knocked out. Like he knocked the dude out, but he threw two extra punches on this guy's unconscious face. It was hard to watch. The interviewer comes in to talk to him after, and he's like, it seemed like there was something personal with this victory. Was this personal for you? The translator took that, repeated it to the fighter in his native language, and the fighter answers. He's like, eh. <laughs> The translator's like, no, nothing personal. <laughs> Fighter grabs the mic back. Translator's like, and give my regard to his mother. That wasn't regard. Love when a fighter thanks God when they win. That's one of my favorite things. 
just finished kicking the shit out of some other person. Interviewer comes in, they don't even let the interviewer finish for their first question, they grab the mic. First of all, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for helping me win tonight. Tremendous. I don't care who you pray to, I just love the idea that you think your God is up in heaven just helping you beat the shit out of some other person. On a Saturday night, you know? Some other person that God also created, but they're just picking favorites based on who prayed more during fight week. Just like, yeah, this guy's my boy. He's been praying all week. I just love the idea of God being a fight fan, you know? The idea that God's getting just as jacked up as I am on a Saturday night. Woo! Fight night, baby! <laughs> Got the fight up on his big screen TV in the God cave, right? <laughs> all jacked up. He's got the homies over. He's got Gandhi on the left, Mother Teresa on the right. Everyone's all amped up. Mother Teresa's like, I hope somebody dies in the ring tonight. Teresa, what's gotten into you? Fight's about to start. They're like, come on! And right before it's about to start, there's a knock on the door of the God cave. It's one of the angels, Gabriel, probably. It's always Gabe, eh? And, uh, Gabe's like, hey, boss, sorry, don't mean to bother you. I know the fight's about to start. I just wanted to let you know I'm, I'm getting word that a tsunami is about to hit Indonesia and I'm hearing that 12 million people could be wiped out just wondering if I could get a little bit of help with that and God's like you say tsunami ah oh, shit yeah I forgot I scheduled that uh, you said 12 million people Gabe Jesus Christ um I can say that he's my son uh, and also me, I don't understand it either, but... <laughs> Tell you what, Gabe, this fight's gonna be over so soon. I mean, it's gonna be a slobber knock. Just let two million die, and then I'll save 10 million, okay? I know two million's still a lot, but this guy's been praying all week. I mean, I can't, I can't let my boy down here. He said he's gonna mention me if he wins, so... Any press is good press, you know that, Gabe. Gandhi's like, I know that. That's why I did the hunger strike. And God's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. That was sick, bro. <laughs> well, you were snacking at night. I saw that. <laughs> You're like, okay, Gabe, just get out of here. The fight's about to start. And then the fight starts, and then right away, God boy is just kicking the shit out of the other dude, right? Just left jab, left jab, right hook, kick to the face. Fight's over so quick. Interviewer comes into the octagon. They're all sitting there like, oh, is he actually going to say it? Is he going to mention God? <laughs> and if you come in, fighter grabs the mic. He's like, first of all, I'd like to. And they're all like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Like, oh! He did it! God, he's like, that's you, bro! That's you! <laughs> Mother Teresa smashes a beer can off her forehead. <laughs> and God's blushing. He's like, I mean, he said he was going to, but you never know if they actually will. <laughs> I kind of feel bad now, because I'm killing his dog tomorrow, but, uh... <laughs> ah, well, he'll understand. I work in mysterious ways. <laughs> Guys, you've been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Start thinking about your grandma and shit. <laughs> Oh my God, I got harder! I'm concussed! I'm confused! <laughs> you guys could just put a note that we'll use the penis bar joke from the first show. <laughs> but keep the laughter from this moment now. Thank you.